Young actor Johnny Lewis was hot off his breakout role on Sons of Anarchy in his relationship with pop superstar Katy Perry. In just a few years, he would be dead in a Hollywood Hills driveway with his skull bashed in. This week on Death and Entertainment. Live from Los Angeles. 911, what is your emergency? Here in Hollywood now. Two counts of murder, injury, and death. Oh my God! Shocking new details that have stunned the entertainment world. Um, this makes me a little nervous. The hair stood up on my arms. Just like in the movies. <laughs> What do you call this thing, anyway? Death in entertainment. Oh, oh my lord, Denos! We are back! We what made it! happened? On the other side of a new year. Jesus Christ. Jeepers Creepers, we made it. How are you? How are you? Hi. How hey. you guys doing? What's going on, dude? I'm feeling very 2023. Ooh. You? Yeah, I guess uh, I guess we, we, uh, we're we doing it again. Yeah, feeling like the same old me. Yeah, we took a little break, but we came right back. Yeah, here, here we, we are. Here we are. Yeah. We don't rest long. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just take a nap, drink some water. Yeah, get right back into it. Yes. Shake it off. Rub some dirt on it, get right back out there. Mm. Get back in. Get back in. What's going on, everybody? My name is Kyle Plouffe. My name is Mark Mulcairin. And I'm Alejandro Dowling. And this episode, we may be in 2023, but this episode will take us to September 26, 2012. Alejandro, what's happening with music? September 26, 2012. Number three, Some Nights by Period Fun. Some Nights are here. I remember that group. I kind of like them. Fun. Well, their name was Fun, so you kind of have to like them, right? (laughs) Yeah. There was a period. What was the point of that period? I don't know. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't write it out correctly on the uh, the <laughs> list here. But it's <laughs> lowercase f u n period. But I don't know what. Oh, the period was after the n. Yes. Oh, okay. And they did the song tonight. Yeah, yeah. That, and some nights that was the other big one. Yeah. Some nights something something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun period. Okay, I yeah. thought fun it was period. period fun. That would be even more weird, but it would still, it's not way out of character of this It's weird kind band. of the yeah. same idea. Yeah same, yeah, same stupid shit. But yeah, they were on the charts at that time. Did they have a third song, or was it just those two? I think that was it. I think that was it. And yeah. then one of the members was dating Lena Dunham. Is that true? Yeah, and Lucky they were them. in the news all the time. Oh, together. really? Yeah, because she was nice. blowing up with girls at that time. What a bad time. Before she blew up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hello. Hello. Hey. Okay, let's relax. Somebody else making a fat joke on the pod. Okay. Wait. Right. That could be interpreted as not a Let's fat Let's not joke. be ableist. Let's not be any of these things. <laughs> I meant before she blew up late, you know, her later with girls. career. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, her follow up to girls, which was. Yeah. Nothing. Does anyone know what I she did I think we're just getting girls? canceled. People just yeah, got her, very annoyed with her. Her book where she admitted to molesting her uh, siblings. Her sister. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. And then she she like was like live tweeting about um, some singer or some entertainer who just wouldn't talk to her at some dinner. Yeah. Some yeah, like yeah. Oscars dinner. And people like, who the fuck do you think you are, Lena Dunham? Who cares? <laughs> and she had that bad press during the Me Too stuff. Did she? Because there was someone that accused one of the producers or writers on Girls of misconduct. Yeah. And then Lena Dunham came out publicly and said, oh, don't listen to her. We know the real facts in this case. Oh, yeah. He didn't do anything. It was believe all women until Mm -hmm. Lena Dunham's involved. Until Lena Dunham says to not believe that woman. Oh, my God. So she had to apologize for that. And (laughs) now I think she's just tweeting from her mansion from her swimming she pool. She comes from money, too. She's a Nepo baby mm-hmm. also, so no one's crying for Lena Dunham. But, no. Yeah. Number two, I think we best move on. Of yeah. course. <laughs> we are never, ever getting back together. Taylor Swift. Sure. And okay. don't ask her about her ex-boyfriends, because she ain't going to answer the question. But it'll be in the next record. Yeah. <laughs> I, is this about Jake Gyllenhaal, or uh, who's this about? Who's it like? Uh... Jake Gyllenhaal. That was so <laughs> fake. Yeah. Her lyrics are just vague booking. Like, I can't tell you, but you should know something bad's going on. Yeah. I can't tell you what it's actually about. I, and love, I love when people do that. Don't Send ask her prayers. about it. Yeah. Remember yeah. that they would ask her on the red carpet, and she'd give a dirty look. 
How dare you? She's playing a character. I kind of respect that. It's like an Andy Kaufman thing <laughs> she's doing. And she was mad when Tina Fey and Amy Poehler made a joke oh, right, at the right Golden right. Globes or something. You know. she, she's fake mad, but she knows how to stir the pot and get people, you know, responding exactly. and, and interested. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Ask her more. That was the movement on oh. the red carpet. Oh, oh really? You know, don't talk about ex boyfriends and don't ask who they're wearing. Okay. Who were you wearing? Remember that though? No. It no. was a movement. <laughs> you remember 2012 so well. <laughs> it was like Oscar so white kind of thing. Oh, was it? Okay. All right. I, we best move on. We yeah. best move on. Number one. This list isn't going so well. No. <laughs> we're, we're in the muck. <laughs> yeah, well, 2012 is bad, obviously. Oof. One more night by Maroon 5. <sighs> One more crappy song. Yeah. <laughs> One more hit that they were lucky to shit out. Yeah. One more headache. For well, you they're all. canceled now, right? Because of the lead singer or something? Yeah, what's up with him right now? They're not canceled, but yeah. Uh, uh, what's Adam name? Levine. Well, Le- well you Levine, can't really yeah. go anywhere when, when your lead singer is canceled. Yeah. What yeah. did he do? Uh, he was just he was cheating on his wife girl, and yeah. messaging people and. That you can't do that. He was being a dirty dog, this guy. Dirty dog. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, with doing something with Lena Dunham. He didn't do anything that bad. He was just being a rock star. That's yeah, what they do, you know. Yeah. He dated Taylor Swift. What's going on? No. <laughs> he was just messaging some girl on uh, Twitter that he wanted to bang. So yeah, he was just having one more night <laughs> with a few women. Yeah. No, yeah, that's about it. Well, you can't have one more night anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what I want? What's that? I want to hear about the movies. Let's hey, hear about the movies, Kyle. Sick of this music stuff. Yeah, terrible. Number three in the box office, September 26, 2012, Resident Evil Retribution. <laughs> what number is that? Seven, uh, eight? They, like they lost track. Resident yeah. Evil <laughs> Refund, please. Yeah. Mila Jovovich. What's her name? Jovovich. <laughs> yeah. Jovovich. She, she has no idea what number they're doing. Yeah. No, she doesn't even know what movie she's doing anymore. She's like, so. where? Check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her English is getting worse over the years <laughs> instead of getting better as she accommodates to America. <laughs> They're like, you have to act first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they dangle in front of her like a dog. <laughs> you have you do the Resident Evil, then you get the checky. Yeah. Number two is the possession. Julianne Moore. Didn't, really? I don't know about it. I don't just a shot in the dark. I think it was the Julianne the Moore movie. The possession. Yeah. The possession. I can't even picture what this is. Yeah. The possess. I know. It there's... sounds like they started with the title and they wrote the movie around it. Yeah. I like because the there title. was a movie called Possession with Aaron Eckhart. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. No, of. but that was many years before. Oh, uh, maybe that's a Julianne Moore movie. I'm so thinking. they this added. This is not Julianne Moore. It's Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Kira Sedgwick. I I know nothing about. And this, this was in theaters. <laughs> Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Number two in the box office. I know. I'm just co- trying to confirm 2012, it, we've we've proven that nothing good came out of yeah, this year. Yeah, this year kind of <laughs> sucks. Terrible. Um, yeah, this is a psychological, uh, supernatural horror film. Yeah. No, thank you. Produced by Sam Raimi. Oh, I like Sam Raimi, though. Yeah. No, now we're talking. Yeah. Now we're talking. Yeah. Now we're talking about something else. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> number one. The number one movie, September 26, 2012, Hotel Transylvania. Never saw it. Adam Sandler? And yeah, there's No, a whole... this this is animated. I think Dan yeah, Harmon. Adam Sandler. Dan Harmon wrote it. Really? I think so. I believe Adam Sandler does the voice of a vampire. He does. Yeah. I'm a vampire. I want the blood. Give me the blood. Keep it out, though. I want to suck your neck. Yeah, it's uh, Adam Sandler, Andy Samberg. Uh, how do you pronounce this? Jendi Tartofsky? Yeah, mm, sure. Tarkovsky. Oh, Sounds that's good. that's the animator that put this together. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm thinking of uh, Monster House. That was Dan Hartman. So mm. Selena Gomez, David Spade, Kevin James. So there's a murderer's row of this whole thing. Yeah. I think murderer's row of the cast of Grown Ups. Yeah, yeah, for real. 
Uh, there is four of these now, so it's a whole uh, franchise. Yeah. yeah, wasn't there one where they go to the beach or something? Probably. Oh, no, yeah. we're talking about Hotel Transylvania. No, so. there is one. I swear. They go to the beach. Yes. yes. Yeah, I thought the... you were talking about Grown Ups. No. <laughs> Hotel Transylvania Three: Summer Vacation. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. See, I'm not lying. They yeah. jumped the shark in the movies. There. Hey, he knows a lot about Taylor Swift and Hotel Transylvania. I know you. Ha- <laughs> you have bizarre <laughs> knowledge of these things. I would not steer you wrong when I'm, it comes to Hotel Transylvania. Pennsylvania it's franchise. Suspicious. Or I'm Lady Gaga. Or Lady Gaga. <laughs> or Lady Gaga or Twi- Taylor Swift. That's yeah. right. You know? right. I'm fascinated. You write a hundred songs about ex boyfriends. Yeah. yeah. And she doesn't want to talk about it. Right. No. Don't don't ask me about what it. What is the deal with Taylor Swift? We went out on top. She didn't want to talk about it. We did it. I made a TV show. It wasn't canceled, Larry King. Yeah. And so far, neither is this podcast. We're still going. We're still going, and we're getting into the story. Let's do this. Okay, well, our subject today is actor Johnny Lewis. Oh, boy. Okay, yeah. so this isn't... Like an A-list icon. No, he was a background player. He was a background player who actually, he did have a starring role eventually. But Yes. Um, L.A. native, actually. Born and raised in North Hollywood, where we are right now. Would you look at that? In and this studio, in he the teamed studio. on the yeah. desk. Yeah. yeah. He was conceived. <laughs> he came up. He was conceived <laughs> and birthed and raised in this room. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah. And he's right behind you right now in, in the corner. Hey, yeah. spoiler alert. <laughs> That's him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever he is over the there. The skeleton. Um, he was the middle child um, and had parents, and the entire family were Scientologists. No. Yes. Not uh, exactly the poster boy. They, had, they sort of disowned him, I'm sure. Who did? Scientology. Johnny Lewis. J- uh, They're not real proud of him, I'm sure. No, well, he turned his back on them first. Oh, he did? He did. Yeah, well, the family family was kind of a um, uh, Jewish-oriented household. Hmm. And then they eventually got really into Scientology. So you can be both. I guess so. Well, I think they were just Jewish in, like, the way that, you know, um, you can be, like, they're not like practicing like as a religion. They're just like they're Jewish, as you would say. You could be a Scientology. Scientology, <laughs> yeah, it's a whole sect. And I don't want to get into the, the reasons I was there, but I always remembered when I was at the Celebrity Center. Oh yeah, you were like a you were like a. <laughs> I don't want to get into you're it. You're a superstar. <laughs> that, yeah, he doesn't want to get into it. After the first I... story I you told us is how <laughs> you crushed a comedy show at the Scientology Center. After I killed at the open mic. Yeah. <laughs> they they did. carried you out like I, Rudy. You said yeah. a stress test on me, whatever it's called. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. And the girl that was giving it, she was trying to convince me how good Scientology is, and she could sense I was a little apprehensive. Yeah. And she's like, well, you know what? For me personally, I'll always be a Catholic. Oh, Oh, really? But I'm a Scientologist, too. And I'm thinking, I thought you had to pick one. They kind of butt heads those two Yeah, I know. Ideas. It was weird. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what her deal was. but I, I always remember she did say that. She, uh, yeah. It's got to be in the Catholic script. Yeah. To be like, don't worry. You're not going to lose yourself completely. You can right. still be whatever you want to be. Yeah, to really like, w- you yeah. know, fish you in there. Yeah. Or really but you give us be. your money. Give us your yeah. money. Yeah. And get your family's money. And shut off your family. Yeah. And the Catholic Church and everyone else. Um, she has red horns and a tail. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I'll always be Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look at the horns. Uh, <laughs> the parents worked their way up to a high level in the Scientology um, Church to operating Thetan uh, or OT8, whatever that is. Wow. They like worked their way up and they were like the real deal. Johnny. Um, he like worked with them and he did like drug rehab videos for them for their Narconon program, <laughs> and, which m- leads you to believe that maybe he did have a drug problem, which is weird because no one like on the record would say he did have a drug problem. But they wow. said they said he was a kooky kid, but he no one confirmed if he was on drugs or not. But I think he was kind of he was always kind of out there. This is before he's eighteen when he's an actual kid. Yes. Yeah. That's a weird thing to say about a kid. 
Like, yeah. He's a little out there, rambunctious. We don't know if it's the drugs or just yeah. him being a silly kid. People <laughs> said he was intoxicating, not intoxicated. Hello. That just means he's like a loud, like maniac kind of. <laughs> so what? Right? Was he like killing at open mics there or something? Ah, uh, well, they don't not have much room. Good. Yeah, with, with Alejandro. He wasn't <laughs> that intoxicating. Yeah. yeah. Imagine if we go there and there's a big shrine of Alejandro on the wall there. That'd like, be yeah, fucking amazing. The day comedy died or something or, <laughs> or you find out I'm OT7 Nine. or whatever uh, so he he was uh, auditioning for roles uh, starting at age 6 so he he wanted to be a child actor wow. it was his choice at age 6 that's what they say but as we've noticed in a lot of these stories you know Brittany Murphy yeah. other people Ryan Grantham you know, it, it's really the parent kind of low key turning them on to it and then saying it was their idea after the fact yeah. Right. Um, so, like the Gerber baby. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. were begging for months. <laughs> I want to hey. be the Gerber baby. Hey, Pop, why don't you drive me to a fucking audition <laughs> over here? I'm a Gerber baby, okay? No. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew Dice baby. Ah. <laughs> and change my diaper once in a while. Ooh, hey. My own. This food sucks. <laughs> um, he. You know, become he does become an actor. He his first role at seven years old. He had, he got a Pizza Hut commercial. Hello, oh. which is it feels like a lot of actors' first role is a Pizza it's Hut. A, it's some pizza sort of pizza some commercial. Sort of pizza. Yeah, Paul yeah. Walker. Paul right? Walker, right? Yeah, that also. was the freaky pizza. The, yeah, yeah, that weird pizza. The rats. Place. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the mechanical rats. <laughs> what a weird concept. Yeah, yeah so we what, don't want to go down. Pizza? Yeah, showbiz oh, yeah. down that alleyway again. Yeah, Pizza Hut. That's pretty official. Pretty official. Yeah, national spot. That's some big bucks there. Yeah. Right. Um. So he be, he gets as he's like growing into like a teenager in his early twenties. He's getting more and more roles. So he moves out of the house. It's like he's moving out to become a big actor, but he's moving from the valley to basically Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. he's already there. <laughs> yeah. He's he's driving ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, he moves in this place called the the Wilton Hilton. Have you ever heard of this? The Wilton Hilton. Wilton on Hilton. on Wilton uh, Boulevard, which is like off of Sunset. There, yeah. I've been there before. There's like a big. There's a bunch of big houses down there where like groups of actors live and shit. Okay. Um, so, so he made like a ragtag group of actor friends that he yeah. lived with. Yeah, and there, there was like a big house where you can just like rent a small room and not pay like you know a one bedroom apartment fee and. You can, you know, as a struggling actor or whatever you you are, singer, you can afford to live there. Yeah. And, like, be within the Hollywood community without having to pay, like, $3,000 for rent. And mm-hmm. were there other notable people around him at this there time? There was. Uh, Adam Brody from the OC oh, okay. was there. Um, Ashley Simpson lived there. Oh, wow. What? Yes. Wasn't she rich already or no? I thought she would have been because her sister was kind of rich, but yeah. but I'm thinking my theory is that maybe she wanted to go off on her, on own, her own and be a struggling person herself. Yeah. Because wow. he didn't need this either. His parents lived ten minutes away, so That's why do even need yeah. to do this? Yeah. Um, I think it's just a way to be social and be out of the house and like be independent. Yeah. Um, he started getting roles on shows like Seventh Heaven, Boston Public, The Guardian, Malcolm in the Middle. And judging Amy, um, he he got a reoccurring role on the OC as Dennis Chili Childress. Um, Chili Childress. Yeah, this is around like oh four oh five. He gets on the OC, which is that's a big role. That's as big as it gets at for, that age for a like, young actor. And you're not just an extra; you're like a reoccurring actor. You're, you're not part of the main cast. You're Chili Childress. Yeah, you're Chili Childress. You're, you're not right. just. You know, bum number two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're stepping up a little bit. Yeah. You're becoming like a real actor here. You're getting yeah, lines. A, yeah. <laughs> and doing lines. Yeah. Hello. Oh, well. Not, he, not know, yet? That's not confirmed. Okay. Um, yeah, I. this is, in my opinion, is what got him not the role of a lifetime, but got him the role as the boyfriend of Katy Perry. Because they mm. start dating around this time. Oh, so she was acting. No, but she was involved in this kind of uh, Wilton Hilton house. So she knew all these people like uh, Ashley Simpson and all the people that were like up and coming, struggling actors and singers that were part of this kind of like, you know, click. And Katy Perry didn't explode until probably around 2008. I think so. So this is when she's 
up and coming. Yeah, if you see pictures of them too, she does not look like the Katy Perry today. She doesn't have a blue wig. Nothing like that. She <laughs> looks like just some girl next door, basically. Um, and they had like a pretty hot and heavy relationship. And actually, that's very fascinating because wasn't she super religious? Yes, that exact. I was just gonna bring that up. She comes from a very like devout Catholic or Christian background in like mm. Santa Barbara, but like yeah, and she was a Christian singer before she yeah. was the pop star Katy Perry. She came, be, he, she came from like some weird mega church or something um, in Southern California. I don't know. I forget the name of it, but yeah, she was super religious, and he was like this kind of weird former Scientologist who's kind of Jewish, and yeah, they just got together and. They had this kind of torrid uh, love affair. Wow. Um, she wrote two songs about him on her Teenage Dream album. Uh-huh. One was The One That Got Away, and the other was Circle the Drain. Jeez. Um, one of them sounded kind of sweet, and the other one sounds odd. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the shit bag. Yeah. <laughs> and the third one was Take Out the Trash. Yeah. <laughs> Arrest my crap bag boyfriend, please. <laughs> Crack your skull. Yeah, who was that about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Taylor Swift is like, hey, I like your songs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you just write about guys, and you don't ex- exactly say who they are? Um but yeah, that was pretty much it. And I guess they broke up because she said she had to focus on her career and not her crazy boyfriend. That sounds kind of wow. smart because her career really took off after that. Well, he also left the OC around the time that they broke up. So I wonder mm. if she just wanted to date an OC actor. Oh, you, are you saying she was shopping around for a better, better deal? Bow? Maybe. Working her way up the ladder? Yeah. Yikes. Oh, yeah, and maybe. this is going to sound like I know way too much about Katy Perry. You do. But it just hit me that her first album, she went by Katie Hudson. Oh. And yeah. It, and it was like a Christian rock album. Oh, yeah. Or wow. Christian pop. Yeah, and then she crossed over eventually. Yep. She must have got some good management in L.A., and then they're like, yeah, we could do something with you. They're like, and lose the Hudson. And lose the boyfriend. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cut the dead weight. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he, I think he had like an undiagnosed bipolar disorder. I think initially that was a big thing Johnny Lewis had because I think, and you could still work in Hollywood with a bipolar. You know, a lo- yeah. we know a lot of people that, ha- that have half still a got Hollywood, half a Hollywood yeah. bipolar. Yeah, he could have been autistic as a kid too. He could have been. Yeah. Um, I mean, if they thought he was on drugs when he was a kid, yeah, that's usually some kind of sign. He's got some highs and lows going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kyle, was, do you have something to add? Did you want to say something, Kyle? <laughs> He's just sitting there like... (laughs) Yeah, he's chuckling over there. Who knows what? Um, Either way, he keeps auditioning and working. He he keeps getting roles. In 2008, he got the role that pretty much everyone remembers him from. It was as Kip Half-Sack Epps in Sons of Anarchy. Half-Sack. They call him Half-Sack because he got one of his balls blown off in uh, in Iraq. Oh, wow. Yeah. Half-Sack. He was a a veteran, so they call him Half-Sack. That's very on the nose. It's very yes. on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I set you up for that one. <laughs> Hello. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, this was like his biggest role everyone remembers him from. No one remembers him from, you know, uh, Boston uh, Public or anything like that. Yeah. This is, he, even the OC. Even the OC. No. Even the casting directors. Um, so that's why w- with all his articles, it's like Sons of Anarchy actor. Yes. Like wimpy kid actor. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. With Ryan Grantham, they really had to stretch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but with him, it's like obvious. It's Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. Yeah. At that's least the headline. You got to have a thing that you're known for. And th- this is what he was known for. Um, a he, lot of episodes. Was he a big regular? The first two seasons, he was huge in it. Um, he got really into it. Like he got like a, two tattoos. He got a star on each shoulder. Um, he got really into motorcycles, uh, which you know, if you see him, he's like a skinny little scraggly like you know dude, and he becomes like a motorcycle head. He gets a Triumph motorcycle and he starts like riding around Hollywood and he gets really into it. So he's believing in his own product, probably. He thinks he's one of these sons of anarchy. Yeah, he thinks he's a son of anarchy. Um, he's <laughs> he's doing some uh, sometime after that. He's doing he's getting new headshots done. I think he wants to get like a new job. Basically, he doesn't really like the sons of anarchy. 
He thinks it's too violent, which what? is wait. I thought he was obsessed with motorcycles and tattoos. But he thinks the show is too violent. That makes no sense. Maybe he wants to leave for other reasons. His dad says he wanted to write a novel. He's, That'd be like if you were on the Smurfs and then you painted your skin blue. Yeah. But then you said, oh, but I think the show is a little stupid. too blue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But again, he's like a crazy guy. So you never know what, what he's going to be feeling from day to day. That's yeah. like that two and a half man actor. Charlie Sheen? No, the half. Oh, the kid, yeah. yeah. When he's like, I cannot condone the language on the show. Yeah, it's yeah. Graphic. me it's, millions. It's gratuitous, yeah. Same thing with Kirk Cameron from, uh, right. from uh, what's it called? Growing Pains. Growing Pains, yeah. He's like, it's pornographic. <laughs> Growing Pains is pornographic. Yeah. <laughs> it was the safest <laughs> show ever. Yeah. Well, it did turn out, actually, a couple of the writers and producers did get busted for child porn, actually, which is a whole other thing. That's like a whole other episode. Ooh, Two of the writers for Growing Pains. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yikes. I never heard of that. That's legit. Wow. Yikes. I guess we have to look into that. Anyway, that's a whole other Another episode. time. Yeah. But, <laughs> but what happens is he's taking headshots one time while he's an actor on Sons of Anarchy. The photographer's like, hey, you should, you know, um, if you're looking for somewhere to stay... There's this kind of like cool, like Hollywood Hills, um, like group house that people live in, like a lot of actors that have kind of already made it, that are past the the Wilton Hilton, and like you can live in like a nicer place. And this woman, this eighty year old uh, lady called Kathy Davis, owns this big house where she rents it out to like up and coming actors and stuff. Um, now it would be like YouTubers. You yeah, it would be like a hype house now. For YouTubers. <laughs> but she had pam, she, pam, pam, pam. she had helped like Val Kilmer, Parker Posey, Paula Poundstone. Wow, Chris, wait, that's a weird. I know, and Chris. <laughs> and wait a second, and Chris Parnell. Wow, <laughs> it's a fucking all over the map uh, grouping of Paula people. Paula Poundstone was the one where it something goes like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and and Chris Parnell and like yeah, a weird that's ass, a, wow, and, and also Thomas Paine. From Hung. Mm. Thomas, Jane. Thomas Jane. Thomas oh, yeah. yeah. Jane. Thomas Jane, yeah. Wow. Um, so, yeah. So, he's like, all right. Well, and then he checked it out. He met this Miss Kathy, which is like some 80-year-old lady, former, you know, real estate broker um, who had lived in Hollywood since like the 50s. Why did she want to support all these young performers? I think she was just a retired older woman who just needed some income from this big property, and she'd rent out. Uh, all these rooms to like these actors and stuff and like she like having this kind of like yeah you know cachet this cachet or these these pe- these uh you know creative people around to like you know keep her living maybe yeah Cause she's like 80 years old she probably yeah had a soft spot clearly for creative types and yeah um apparently it wasn't very expensive at all like it it wasn't but it wasn't that cheap it yeah. was like 1300 up to like 3000 depending on which oh, really? room you got yeah because oh, wow. there was a lot of options you could get like um, he took like the red villa. <laughs> well, it was called the writer's villa, and he took like the red room, which was like the more expensive side of it. The red room that sounds like the shiny. sounds ominous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, they called her Miss Kathy, and they and he would uh he decided to move in there, and Johnny would talk to her all the time, and they would hang out. And they were like good friends. Wow. Um. Sounds like a nice lady. Nice lady. Yeah. Um, eventually in 2009, Johnny tells Sons of Anarchy creator Kurt Sutter that he wants to leave the show uh, after two seasons uh, because the storylines, like I was saying, were getting too violent, <laughs> which is very interesting considering the type of person he is and what was going on. And eventually life. became. And eventually what would happen anyway, yeah. also, which makes it it's absurd. doubly insane or triply insane. An actor, say, leaving a show because it's too violent? Yeah. A yeah. show called Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. I mean, you really gang. lost your marbles. About bikers who are killing each other. Yeah, yeah. It's like in the pilot. What are you talking about? What is going and on? And where are you going to find another show that's less violent? But the thing, That's his bread and butter. But the thing is, he's a, he's in the main cast. He makes a ton of money. Yeah. He yeah. makes a ton of money. And he's like, I think he got so much. He's like, all right, now I can just hang out and just like write my novel and live in this writer's villa and just be cool. He uh, wanted to become get, a, like five seasons. That that's when you actually have money to be. Yeah, able to, he like, like Charlie Hunnam money. I'm sure yeah. he wound up 
you know, with with yeah. FU money at the he, end of yeah, the Yeah, he did God. have enough money to turn down Fifty Shades of Grey. Did he? Charlie Hunnam, yeah. Oh, okay. He was cast, then he changed his mind and dropped out. See? You, wow. Same thing with Topher Grace. You know, he made all that money in that 70s show, and he doesn't didn't he need to do much else after So that. he yeah. didn't need to do Spider-Man 3? I was going to say, I wish he didn't do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could, could you have spared <laughs> us a little, please? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Played so, a great David Duke, though. Oh, in Black Klansman. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I still got to watch that one. Oh, you haven't seen that? No, I haven't wow, seen it yet. Wow, that's yeah. a great one. But but he's able to do roles that he really chooses instead yeah. of like... So yeah. Johnny Lewis had this delusion yeah. that he's going to now do b- better roles and oh, write no, a he, novel. He's writing a novel about a musician in San Francisco, which is like, wow, that's you know that's a hook for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to read that. That's, yeah. That doesn't even sound like a bargain bin. That sounds like no. the trash bin. Yeah. I want to write a book about the Counting Crows. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Wipe my ass with it. (laughs) I want to write a book about a dude that appropriates dreadlocks. Yeah. (laughs) And dates Courtney Cox. Yeah. And hangs out at the Viper Room. (laughs) Yeah. Like a place that kills movie stars. Yeah. (laughs) By the droves. Mr. Jones and me. (laughs) Um, So anyway, they kill him off the show by uh, having him stabbed to death while he's trying to save a baby on Sun Devan. Oh, they should have shot his other ball off. Woo! <laughs> Johnny, no was, sack. Yeah, no, no sack. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that hilarious, though, that he complains that it's too violent, then they have him stabbed to death? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they should have had him, like, keep waking up, and then a Mack truck comes and runs yeah. him over. It's like naked gun. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> a, a marching band <laughs> yeah, walks yeah, over yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's an airdrop of bombs and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He might, he might still be all right. Yeah. <laughs> Lena Dunham falls on top of him. <laughs> <laughs> You're canceled. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought you were my sister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, he's, he's living his best life that he wants to live back at the, the writer's villa. Um, and... 2010, he actually he knocks up a his girlfriend actress named Diane Marshall Green, and she he has a baby daughter. Wow! Mm. He was really excited about this. He was like really, like loved the idea of being a father for like two weeks. So he <laughs> has a daughter <laughs> out there. Yeah, I did not know that. He does. Yeah, uh, him and uh, Diane get an apartment together, and he was planning on becoming like a family man. Um, and then not too long after that, him and Diane break up and he uh, he moves out on his own. Man. And there's a custody battle that he loses and he doesn't really put up a huge fight. Oof. Yeah. Um, he's just riding his motorcycle around L.A. trying to figure himself out. Um, on October 30th, 2011, he gets into a high speed accident on his motorcycle and he like bashes his head. Mm. I don't know if he had a helmet on or not. Either way, he lost control. Uh, of the motorcycle and just hit his head hard. Um, he probably had to have had a helmet to survive that. I guess so. Yeah, he was around like 29 Palms, they call it. I don't know where that is, but I think that's... Like oh, a- that's like the military town. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's uh, east of here. Okay. Out in the desert, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, well, I- he found himself. <laughs> yeah, he found himself bloodied and bashed on the yeah, side of the road. He found himself rolling down the street. <laughs> yeah. He found the other half of his head down yeah. the street. <laughs> uh but he he was in the hospital in like the doctors were like no concussion, but we want to do an MRI, which would like really like be able to figure out if he like did any has any brain damage or anything. And Johnny's like, No, I'm not doing it. Wow. He refused all MRI appointments his dad set up for him. He wouldn't take it. He wouldn't do it. It sounds like he already had brain damage before the accident. Well, that that's what people say, but they, they think this like exacerbated it. Had uh, to have, right? I there's there's no way he there's no way of knowing. It's a traumatic well, the, injury the though. The problem some people chalk this up to the fact that he was a Scientologist in like you kind of refuse psychiatric help when you're yes. a Scientologist. And that's kind of built into the entire religion. Mm. Curse the alleys, like here, take this pill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like time was going by, and like a friend saw him at like a um, an acting class that they were taking together, and his friend said he was just talking in a British accent, <laughs> and like he's and he called him out, like, "Why are you talking with a British accent?" And then he like shrugged it off. He's like, you know, 
Ah, I was just joking or something. But Don't he, know what you mean. But he, <laughs> hey, what are you talking about, mate? <laughs> Let's go for a pie, we do it, eh? <laughs> but he was just trying to get away it, with being a British person in front of other people. And he Madonna went, did that. Yeah, yeah. She's crazy. <laughs> well, I think she's certifiably crazy yeah. also. Yeah. And Renee Zellweger for a time. Yeah. yeah. I, I have a question, though. Was he taking the class like he was just a student? No, yeah, I think it's like... It's like uh, like Gene Cousinow's class in Barry. You know, it's just like a an <laughs> ongoing class just to keep yourself sharp as an actor. Okay. Yeah. With other known actors. Other or? yeah. This guy Jonathan Tucker, who's an actor actually from Boston, from Toronto. Oh, I know of or, him. Uh, yeah, he was in a lot of stuff. They were good friends, and he was witnessing like the the deterioration of mm. of Johnny's brain. Same so way. he would talk wow. to Jonathan Tucker with the with Brit- the British accent, a guy he knew forever. A guy who knew forever. Oh, yeah, that would yeah. be so weird. And it was just like, why are you? doing that <laughs> right like if you just kind of showed up to an episode here and started talking british accent hello you all you ready <laughs> and we're like all right alejandro yes yeah, let's let's get into it here let's do the episode and you just kept doing it that yeah, would be, be insane, insane. that'd be insane <laughs> you'd think i was insane yeah we'd leave here being like did you witness what was going on there <laughs> like we can't use that episode <laughs> but we will but we will <laughs> and then i start complaining like the podcast has too much blue humor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, pornographic. <laughs> <laughs> I can't condone it. Um, yeah, but friends said he was not a party guy. Not like Jonathan Tucker said, not a party animal. He was more of a, um, he was more of a tea drinker than a drinker. Mm. He was a tea totaler. Yeah, something like that. Um, and then all of a sudden, he starts like going off the deep end. Uh, on January 3rd, 2012, he commits felony assault with a deadly weapon. He was hanging out at his parents' condo in Northridge. He bought them a condo with some of the Sons of Anarchy money. So he must have got some crazy money. Yeah. So he, he's hanging out there one morning um, at this condo he bought for his parents in Northridge. Suddenly, he just wants to go for a walk. And then he starts walking, and he thinks he hears screams coming from a condo that's empty in the complex. Mm. And he breaks in. And looking for where the screams are coming from. And there's two men who I think, I think either were security at the condo complex or they were just in the area. And they tried to stop him and he attacks them with a, um, with an Avion, no, a Perrier bottle. He attacks him with a Perrier bottle and like knocks them around and like breaks it on one of the guy's heads. And uh, they, how hoity toity of him. I know that's kind of like a, an upper middle class thing to get arrested for Jeez. breaking yes. a Perrier bottle. I threw me Perrier <laughs> bottle. Yeah, at he the still has a British accent. Yeah, <laughs> oi, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, he and then the guys just, just hold on to him and detain him until he got arrested. Um, he was wow. sent to the Twin Towers prison in LA, which is like a bad place to go. Yeah, I've heard about this place, I know people that have gotten DUIs and gone there. I want to go to a place called the Twin Towers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just gonna yeah. fucking say what that. a name, and they just kept it. Like, who cares? <laughs> yeah, Jesus. We're yeah. still standing. Yeah. <laughs> and next, we're going to go to the station nightclub rehab center. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For pyros. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they never confirmed that there was screaming. No, no, there was no one there. Nothing no, to no be one, found. Nothing to be found okay. there. He That's was, schizophrenia. He totally just made it up in his own head. Yeah. Um, he gets out of the twin towers, as they call it, um, and he was he has like two black eyes. Like apparently, he was just bashing his head against the wall while he was in jail there. Um, his sister said he was like a like a broken animal. Just didn't want anyone to touch him. He was like fearful of light. Uh, he broke the parents' fuse box at the, the Northridge condo and wow. just didn't want any electricity being used. Oh, sounds like he was a vampire. He sounds like a vampire, yeah. <sighs> sounds like Chuck McGill. Yeah, he tells me. Better Call Saul. Saul. Yeah, totally. <laughs> right. Uh, during this time, he also slashes his wrists Oof. Uh, in a suicide attempt. Uh, over time, it like, took him a couple of weeks, he starts showing some improvement, and he wants to move out on his own again. And he moves to a uh, apartment in Santa Monica, of all places. Maybe he thinks like the ocean is going to make him feel better or something. Mm. Um, but then, February 10, 2012, he gets arrested again mm. when he sucker punches a man on his way out of a yogurt shop with his yogurt <laughs> for no reason. 
He's like, oi, man, what do you got there? A chocolate swirl? You got some yogurt? You call that a fucking yogurt, mate? You call no that a whipped cream, <laughs> motherfucker? <laughs> How dare you? Could you imagine being that poor guy? Yeah. You go to get some yogurt? You already, you don't want to be seen buying yogurt no. anyway. Yeah. yeah. Then someone attacks you. Yeah, yeah. just starts punching you in the face for what? Like you wanted to forget about the buying the yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> And then it becomes a big thing. <laughs> Just another for having a strawberry twist. <laughs> another couple of days later, he walks fully clothed into the ocean in Santa Monica and was hop- hospitalized for hypothermia. Wow. So he stayed in the water a Yeah, while. he just he's just fully clothed, just walks directly into the ocean. Yeah. And what were the signs he showed that he was well again? Uh, exactly. It yeah, like what's he the never dad? Got well. The dad is seeing what we're not seeing clearly. Um, eight days after that, he's arrested again on February 18th, this time for burglary. According to law enforcement, uh, he tried to break into a woman's house through a window, claiming he was looking for a friend. Imagine breaking into <laughs> someone's house like, hey, is my friend in here? <laughs> I'm looking for my friend. <laughs> wow. This is a, a very impressive amount of arrests uh, going on. Yeah. Consecutive. In a, sh- in a short span of time. Yeah. Quite the nosedive. Yeah. Mm. It's really, things are really not going well for Johnny here. Mm. Um, his friend Jonathan Tucker says in May he knows Johnny is not the same person. Uh, he has like a dead look in his eye, like a jaded war veteran. Mm. He just speaks nonsense now. Now it's not even the British accent. It's just like rambling nonsense. Yeah. This sounds like schizophrenia. Yeah. Just hearing things, uh, <laughs> bouts of violence. Uh, that Yeah. Jesus. I wonder if he would be on the street yelling at people. He would be. Oh, yeah. 100%. He'd probably, yeah. yeah, downtown. If he had no family, friends, and no network or anything, he would be down in, like, Skid Row. Yeah. You're like, ain't that the guy from the Pizza Hut commercial? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I imagine, yeah, that's what they call him out for. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza Hut commercial actor Johnny <laughs> Lewis. Yeah, he gets like a year in jail. Um, mm. He yeah is sentenced to like a year, and he doesn't. Wow. He doesn't even serve that much time because um, he he gets out in like September of 2012. And when did he go in? He went in in like February. You'd think that would do something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's released from like a treatment program on uh, September twenty first, two thousand twelve. Wow. Um, and eventually, he decided to go back to the writers' villa. His dad thought it was a good idea because he didn't want to be staying at home, and his parents probably don't want him there yeah. anyway. How about you fucking beat it, mate? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to live on my own, <laughs> Depa. <laughs> I'm okay now. I yeah. swear it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, He's so, holding a knife. So lucky, like, okay, Johnny. Go, <laughs> yeah, go play. Yeah, you said you look great, kid. Uh, we're gonna send you back to that writer's villa. Uh, how about that novel? Huh? <laughs> it love sounds a like great de- idea. I love the dent you made in the wall with your head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, your face shaped dent in the wall. Yeah. So yeah, really <laughs> ties the place together. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the red room, isn't it? <laughs> we'll put some of your rags you've been wearing in a plastic bag. We'll bring it to the uh, writer's retreat. Or yeah, writer's we'll squeeze villa. the salt water out of them. Yeah. <laughs> and catch you right back. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they, they bring him back to the writer's villa, which Kat, Kathy Davis um, was more than happy to allow him back. I don't think she knew what was going on there. I think her, I think Johnny's parents sent a ticking time bomb to this place. Oh, 100 percent. That's awful. Yeah. Last time she saw him, he was on the OC, probably. Yeah. Well, he <laughs> dating he, Katie Hudson. He was getting a lot of psychiatric drugs, and he was cheeking them, meaning like he put them on the side of his cheek and then spit them out when like the officials would stop looking at him and stuff. But he wasn't being cheeky. No, well, as the British, I be, say. Well, he was being cheeky, bit cheeky, yeah, a bit cheeky, mate. Um, and no one noticed he wasn't taking his meds. Um, well, people noticed his behavior was still crazy, but I think people <laughs> thought like he was he was taking that, and he thought yeah. they thought he was going to get better eventually because some of these psychiatric drugs take like time to take effect. So he's there a couple days. A few days after moving in there, his dad calls him, and Johnny's like, "I'm too busy today. I'll call you back later." Um, and that was the last time he ever talked to him. 
That was on September 26, 2012. Mm. Last so, words to yeah. the dad. Wow. So on that day, a little bit later, police were called to the writer's villa, and in the driveway, they find Johnny face up on the driveway with his skull cracked in half and his eye socket caved in. That's the first thing they see when they roll up to the writer's villa. Yikes. Yeah. Wow. Um, he had plunged from either the second floor or the roof and died instantly. How uh, many stories is that? I think it was like three stories. I think it, the way it is there, it's like a, it's like on a hill. Um, so like, I think like the driveway is like caved down. So once you hit the driveway, it's even more of a drop. Mm. Um, and I, n- they don't know where exactly he jumped off from or, or he fell off. They don't know which, which one it is. Or thrown. Or thrown or, uh, uh, you know, brisk wind knocked him <laughs> over. I have the sweaty palms thinking about that. Oof. Those kind of heights freak me out when you oh, imagine yeah. jumping or falling. Yeah. From that, like, not even, not even like too high a distance, that kind of distance. Just a middle, you know, like, it, yeah, would it kill you or not? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like that kind of thing. And it's terrifying. Well, it killed him for sure. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> killed him. Like on the spot. Like spoiler there was, alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> Turned into a pancake after that drop. Um, inside the house, uh, the scene was even more gruesome. Um, in his room, um, Johnny's room, please find a bloody hammer. They follow the broken glass and blood to the bathroom where they find a dead cat in the shower. Oof. Yeah, bludgeoned with the hammer, obviously. In the room across, they find uh, the bloody body of Kathy Davis. In the room, there's blood ev- it's everywhere. There's blood everywhere. Just imagine just bashing someone to death with a hammer, which, you know, you, some people imagine from time to time. Um, yeah, I guess. The blood force trauma to her head fractured her entire skull and obliterated the left side of her face, leaving her brain exposed. Oh, my God. Good yeah. Lord. This is... As violent and horrific as it could get, yeah. When to kill somebody that brutally, yeah. Uh, there were and an old lady, no less. I know, like she's a brittle old lady. Like she shouldn't be taking beatings like this from this maniac. No, she could hardly go down the steps. I know. You know, much less take a hammer to the head. <laughs> yeah. Mark, this is not a laughing matter. Jeez. And that cat. Let's not forget about the cat. Yeah, the cat. You know, don't fuck with cats. Don't do it. Don't do it. We'll find you. Yeah, he broke that really fucking. And don't cat. fuck with old ladies. Don't. Yeah, she was a nice old lady too. She was, uh, you know, she was very inviting and welcoming to all these people into her house. And I think she just didn't know the extent of insanity of this guy. And time. she was probably yeah. trying to help him. Yeah, I think a little bit. Well, well, what had happened is there was a rumor that the day before they were they were they had an argument. That he broke the fuse box on purpose, like oh, he did shit. at his parents' condo. So he broke the fu- fuse box at the the writer's villa, and she was like, "Did you do that?" And he's like, "Yeah." And he, and she's like, "Don't do that ever again. Don't fuck with my fuse box. You know, don't mess with my house. Don't do this. You know, or you gotta go." Yeah. And obviously, he took this the wrong way, and he went crazy. Um, he probably in his mind thought. Oh, breaking the fuse box will solve this problem. Yeah. All right. Someone, some voice told me to break the fuse box, and how dare you I wonder, tell me it was wrong? Yeah, I wonder the, the thought process behind that. Like, maybe he thinks, like, like, some government entity is, like, you know, pushing bad brain signals in through the you know, electrical system or something. Mm. That's my only rationale for what, what could possibly be going through this yeah. maniac's head at this time. Yeah. Um, he, he attacked more people on the scene here. Um, he punched uh, her several times and then strangled her with his bare hands. Um, it was unclear whether he used the hammer found in her, in her room um, on her, but the force of his beatings were so severe that the investigators believe Lewis may have stomped on Davis's skull. He then killed the cat after that and left it in the shower. And that's the cat right there. Yeah. That's both of them, yeah. He then goes outside and then attacks the house painter of the neighboring house. So he's not done yet. 
Um, and then the owner goes to break up the fight, and then he attacks the owner of the, of the neighboring house. Um, the neighbor miraculously just hits him with a chair, which stuns Johnny, and then they all run in the house. And they're trying to... This is the neighbor's house now. They're trying to close the door, and Johnny's arm is, like, stuck in. It's like a monster movie. He's like a, a mutant or, or something. <laughs> and then they see him running outside. Yeah. He's, like, jumping fences. He has, like, superhuman strength. Jeez. He's, like, jumping fences. And then he climbs up uh, on uh, the, the writer's villa house. He goes all the way up to the top, and then next thing you know, he falls off. Yeah. Or jumps. Or jumps. And that uh, red trail you see on the screen here, if you're watching the, the video, that uh, is the aftermath of that jump. Yeah. Oof. Oh, my God. Yeah. See, like, you, like, this is like a higher house. Like, Wait, that's, uh, that, that's all the blood right there? Yeah. Looks like a Jackson Pollock painting. Yep. Yikes. Yeah, some people were saying that it was basalt. Remember basalt? <laughs> Like do I, I? Yeah, do I? It was like big in the news for a while. Like some guy was on the 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 side of a Florida highway, like eating another guy, and he was on basalt. Yes. So they they thought that was what what brought uh, this about. Just a mania. Yeah, um, they did a toxicology after the fact, and they they tested for everything: meth, fentanyl, coke, heroin, you name it. All nothing came up. Yeah, that's totally the clear. Part about totally wasn't on any I drugs. Read, I read the toxicology report. Nothing came up. They yeah, checked nothing. it for opiates. They, like every single thing. They I thought that. he was on meth. No. You would think. Especially with like the superhuman strength. Yeah. And fighting all these people and jumping over fences. Yeah. he's got, they, the, One of the guys said he looked like Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, my God. To bring up Spider-Man again. <laughs> yeah. And he was just like, he was like possessed. Jeez. I really thought he was on meth. I thought I had remembered that. No, the story. That one of the things I remembered was that when they did the drug test, he was completely clean. Yeah. Wow. It was so crazy. Um, his final TV role was Criminal Minds. Um, I, I have a clip here from Criminal Minds. Apropos. Was, yeah. yeah. Him and Joey Montagna going head to head here. What do you think you're going to get out of this? I don't know. We'll see. You don't have to say anything else, Eric. You got to speak to him. Now let's just wait for the DA. I don't know how to break it to you, kid, but you don't have a card to play here. We're three steps ahead of you. Oh, really? We've already considered the possibility that you killed other people. We knew you were young, wanted to experiment. It was likely you would copycat as many serial killers as possible to figure out who you are what you like. I guess David Mamet wrote this scene. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. <laughs> Mame. How do you know you haven't told me already where the other bodies are buried? Whoa. Dun -dun. Bass drop. Say Maybe that. Montaigne's what drove him crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when was that uh, role? 2009. Okay, well, so, so they might have filmed it maybe a couple months before, or a year before that or something. So that's when he kind of dropped off. Kind of dropped off. He didn't really do much after that. Some, like, small, like, shitty movies and stuff after that. So that was pretty much... The end of his act was 2009, and, like, I don't know. Th this is my debate with this. He was going crazy before the uh, the the motorcycle accident. Yeah. He People said he was he was really, like, nutty. But I think he was, like... Bipolar on the spectrum, something like that, and then that, um, that, you know, that crash really did no good for him. It, yeah. it made it exacerbated any other issues he had. Like what happened to Gary Busey? Is it, wait, he had a bad crash. Yeah, and he was never the same after that. Yeah, he was like a vegetable after that. Yeah, I remember he was on that roast. I was like, why is he showing up here? Yeah. Like, <laughs> he, yeah, he looks like a mental patient. <laughs> well, we have to have a little. Empathy, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Yeah. But how the, dare the, you? The people on that roast did not have any empathy for, like Greg Giraldo. Yeah, like, Greg Giraldo's yeah. like, your teeth are so huge they look like urinals, and I want to <laughs> yeah. piss on them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, someone and said, look what happened to him. Yeah. Someone said you look like Nick Nolte fucked the Clydesdale. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that might have been his, uh, Gary too. Well, yeah, look what happened to him. Yeah, yeah. future episode, future app, yeah. Greg Giraldo, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, this was a confusing one for me because I didn't really, I didn't really understand 
because it it looked like like a brand new person came out after that um that motorcycle crash and it was just like people were like you know he was a main he was an acceptable kooky person before but now he's just a straight up maniac yeah so he was like a Shia LaBeouf yeah kind of yeah exactly like LaBeouf people would say you know he was kind of you know a mental not like not mental patient but not like he was, kind of yeah he was crazy yeah he was is yeah. I don't know I don't know his current state, but I think he's on the sober track. These yeah, days. he's in rehab. Well, yeah, rehabilitating yeah. himself. Uh, he's done some podcasts talking about it. Sounds like he's yeah. on the up and up. But uh, many people knows? would outpour on social media saying, you know, expressing their shock and sadness. Um, Katy Perry said some stuff. Um, what did she say? She pretty much glowing like he was a great guy. And, you know, Kurt Sutter is the only one that got real uh, with his response. He said this. It was a tragic end for an extremely talented guy who unfortunately had lost his way. I wish I could say that I was shocked by the events last night, but I was not. I am deeply sorry that an accident, uh, that an innocent life had to be thrown into his destructive path. Mm. Yes, it's a day of mourning, but it's also a day of awareness and gratitude. Sadly, some of us carry the message by dying. Wow. So he's pretty much saying, like, you know... The, this was the path he was already on in 2009, maybe, when he, when he, maybe just by quitting. Nobody Sucker leaves Man, a hit show when that was your whole track, your whole life to be a successful actor. Yeah. Yeah. That's already strange behavior. Right. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. So maybe something happened before that. I don't know. But Kurt Sutter seems to be saying, yeah, this guy was going the wrong way for a while here. Mm. When he was a Scientologist. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of already on the wrong track. The amount of Scientologists that have killed people, uh, I think it's really up there. So what are you trying to say, Kyle? Uh, it's a murderous organization. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Alejandro kills at the Scientology yeah, Center. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he took uh, a whole bunch of lives with him. Yeah. <laughs> but they <laughs> murdered the stage. <laughs> they do have good taste. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, taste of blood. God. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the gist of the Johnny Lewis uh, story, which died at 28 years old. And so you're saying you don't know if he actually jumped? But no one knows. No one knows if he fell or jumped. The, I think he jumped. The police jumped. report considers it uh, accidental death. Really? Uh, because they don't know. He had to have jumped. Look at where the blood was. Yeah. Yeah. If he had fallen, wouldn't it be close? It wasn't that close to the house, was it? No, but when you fall like that, who knows when, uh, where you're going to land? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know, but he was like Spider Man jumping over walls and beating up painters and stuff. And <laughs> like, w- like, there's no explanation of that. It, clearly, you're on like a suicidal type path. Yeah. When you kill an 80 year old woman that who's your your you know your landlord and their cat and the cat. Jeez. He's never showed any signs of like harm towards animals before this. Or wow. any murders or violent tendencies before he starts punching guys in like yogurt shops. Yeah. I mean that's usually the first step for someone who's planning on killing eventually at some point and they usually start they with start animals. They start with the animals, yeah. 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 But in his case he grouped them together. Yeah. Yeah. Got yeah, he all. did he got them all done in like one year one or two years. He so beca- he's efficient. He's a f- yeah. Well, he's a late bloomer, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it, this was a weird one. I didn't really understand it. This is always think. my issue with a guy like this. Like, you know, he was crushing it, yeah, in Hollywood and had like. And everything. then he crushed himself <sighs> on the pavement. That's the tagline right there. <laughs> <laughs> he crushed it till the end. Yeah, he crushed until he couldn't crush anymore. Until the life life crushed him. So is that your final thought? Um, that's pretty much my final thought. I don't know. Yeah. So Kyle, did you have anything to add here? I just, you know, it's a shocking situation. It, you know, seems like there's a lot of mental health issues, but the court even said that he had um, suffered from f- some form of chemical dependency, uh, mental health issues, and a lack of permanent housing. And they said in a May 17th probation report that given this, Lewis will continue to be a threat to any community he may reside. And so that was, you know, just a few months before this all happened, and they called it. 
Yeah. They shouldn't have sent him back to that house, the actor's house. Yeah. yeah. I think the da- the parents just didn't want to deal with him. They're like, uh, yeah, you can go back to the house. Poor, yeah, well, sorry. Poor Kathy Davis. Yeah, sorry, y'all, but yeah. you're going to have to take care of your kid. Yeah. yeah. And not burden the rest of society. Yeah. Yeah. But the fact he was just completely sober when all that shit was going down is crazy. Unreal. I don't know if, if they test for stuff like bath salts or like um, K2 or whatever the fucking like you could buy them at corner store, like the spices or whatever. You think there could have been like designer drugs that they're just not aware of in the yeah, test? Yeah, I mean, that, I think that that definitely could play a role. Like um, synthetic drugs or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if that would even come up in like a drugs, like a uh, toxicology report, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, something was definitely. Not right with that guy. It was weird because he went to this place called Ridgeview in Altadena, and he he said he had a marijuana addiction. Just to get out of jail, they said he had a marijuana oh addiction, which, of course, you know, whatever. Yeah. But they just wanted him to get out of prison, basically. And he went there, and he was, like, showing positive signs yeah, um, of, like, doing well. And they like that allowed him to get some time off his sentence. And then, you know, he just had this insane mania inside of him that just came out once he went back to that writer's villa. Like, mm. what's the difference between him and a serial killer that has a mania to kill people? Yeah, they don't have some of anarchy money. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't. We don't know if he had this compulsion to kill people this whole time. Maybe he was just hanging on to it. And sometimes when people go crazy, it doesn't manifest until their 20s. Yeah. Um. So maybe that was it, too, and it just, like, it it became uncontrollable at, at some point. Yeah. I think it's like, you know, there's a whole bunch of things at play at column A, column B. It's like you have the traumatic brain injury, you have mental illness, and you have, you know, drugs and alcohol on top of it. Yeah. Um and uh But it wasn't drugs or alcohol. Not that specific day, but you know, you don't know if he was doing it before. Yeah, there's not a lot of uh proof or like people saying that he was doing that, but who knows? Yeah. Hmm don't know he could have also done like a really bad dose of acid one time and it just drove him <laughs> insane <laughs> who knows i don't know yeah i yeah. read a blind item that he had guessed it on malcolm in the middle yeah and that there was a house or a, the house on set there was a room that was haunted and anyone that it went in that room, bad stuff would happen. <laughs> oh, boy. So Alejandro's bullshit corner again. <laughs> <laughs> the two leads went in the room, and their careers were never the same. Oh. And when Johnny Lewis guest starred on the show, he went in the room, too. Whoa. And that has since been destroyed. Well, we set. know Brian uh, wow. Breaking Bad guy. Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. He didn't, didn't go in the room. room. No, he did not. Wow. Clearly. And then one other blind item said that he actually had jumped off a roof before in 2009. Oh. And that they suspected meth. And wow. that he had injured himself and then went to an award show and hid his injury. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say really quick, I missed a couple of friends on the, uh, our, one of our big listeners. Yes. A couple of, I missed uh, Ian and Andy Flaherty. Yes. Uh, big uh, die heads from back uh, hometown and want to give them a shout out here because I totally forgot them on Big that. ups. Big ups to Framingham. Framingham. <laughs> <laughs> we hear you and we thank you. Yes. Thank you. And also Rose Crane because uh, she, we were talking about her earlier. Yes. And, so. and Epic Ghost Shadow from YouTube. Yes. Who had quite a few recommendations. Oh, nice. Yeah, as always, make sure you go to our iTunes. Give us a review, please. Please, God reviews. Sakes. We need the reviews. Give us, it's, a, it's our New Year's wish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's on Spotify as well. You can give us five stars there if you've listened to at least one episode. They allow you to rate it. Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, everything. TikTok, TikTok. Death and Entertainment. Yeah, we're influencers on TikTok. Yes. Yeah. We're about to hit 5,000 viewers. Also, thank you, everybody who's uh, subscribed to us on YouTube, 2,500 followers. Mm -hmm. Uh, We got a special treat coming for hitting both of those milestones uh, coming award season. It's the first annual Death and Entertainment Shitlist Awards. A.K.A. the shitties. Yes, that's coming (laughs) next month. For award season, and uh, you know that's something to look forward to. We're going to be rolling out a breakdown of all the categories, and I'm, I think we're going to allow our listeners to vote. 
Yes. On what, what they th- what the, who they want to win. This is going to be like the People's Choice Awards. Yes. But for shitty people in, yeah. in, in the universe of our podcast. The Dedo's Choice Awards. The Dedo's Choice Awards. <laughs> American Dedo. Yeah. yeah. Man. If we needed another title for this award show, <laughs> now we got it. I guess. We got a couple more. Yes. So uh, if you have any ideas for nominees, categories for the Shitlist Awards, send them on to us. Please. Okay? We love it. Yes. We love the input. And actually, uh, shout out to Samantha Morris. Uh, love Samantha. Keep your chin up, kid. Sorry, Samantha. Uh, we are wishing you well. Yes. Yes. We love you. And until next time, don't go dying on us. You have just heard a true Hollywood murder mystery. I have never seen anything like this before. The movies, Broadway, music, television, all of it. A place that manufactures nightmares. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap. Good night. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. 